Hello everybody, this is Gregory of 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics and Living, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to talk about how some Protestants and even some Catholics believe it's unfair that most churches only allow communicants to receive one species of the Eucharist. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nome de Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filii et Spiritui Sancto. Secutera in principio et nucleat semper et seculae seculorum. Amen. In the banners later in this episode, I'm going to put previous episodes regarding the Eucharist. Uh, so there are Protestants, and, and these are normally going to be liturgical-based Protestants. These aren't going to be evangelical megachurch types, but let's say Lutherans or Episcopalians or whatnot. And they know enough about the Catholic Church. Maybe they were Catholics at one point or they've gone to Catholic Mass, and they see that Catholics as a whole, we only receive the body of Christ, or we only receive... Um, the bread before it becomes the body of Christ and they think that's unfair or they 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 look at what scripture says and when Christ instituted the Eucharist he broke the bread and also had the, the chalice so I want to do an episode on this because I think there's a misunderstanding and the number one thing I would tell people is read the read the catechism what the catechism says about the Eucharist because it's very well fleshed out but it's also easy to understand but I'm just going to do a quick synopsis here. So, look, we're receiving all the graces from the sacrament of the Eucharist by receiving it under one species, in other words, one type, which is the, the, the host. We're receiving all the graces from it. And we don't need to receive from the, the chalice. You can. There are some parishes now, especially post-COVID, that allow you to receive from the Eucharist and then later from the chalice. You don't have to. This was all defined back in the Fourth Lateran Council. Fourth, if, if you really want the, the council that kind of fleshed out transubstantiation, where the, the essentially the accidents remain the same, but in substance it becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, I would I would recommend that you check out that uh, it, that council, which was in the the late 13th century, and I'm sorry, early 13th century, and then later Council of Trent fleshed it out in the mid 16th century. But the the accidents, the bread and the wine, remain the same but the substance changes into the body and blood of Christ. And this is something that the early church believed. You can read the church fathers. They believed in the real presence of the Eucharist and so forth. So look, when it comes to receiving the Eucharist, we don't need to receive from the cup. You can receive from the cup. There's many churches. For example, if you go to a traditional Latin mass, they only receive from one species. If you go to the ordinary of the chair of St. Peter, they do intinction. A lot of the Eastern churches do intinction, where, for lack of a better word, they dip the host into the wine, and then you receive both species. But it's not like, and think about TLM, at least in the Latin, right, is, is probably the most august, ancient uh, liturgy that we have. And you think for all these hundreds of years they've been doing it wrong? No, they haven't been doing it wrong. Now, the priest, because some would say, well, the priest is receiving under both species. Of course he is, because he has to because Christ told him to in the institution of the Last Supper. They have to receive from both species, but we don't have to receive from both species. And look, some Sola Scriptura Protestants and even some Sola Scriptura Prod or Catholics who don't understand it, they'll be like, what well, the Bible says, da -da 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 -da. the Bible never says that we have to receive from both species. And when it comes to the, like the liturgical kind of applications of the Eucharist, there's not a lot in the New Testament about it. We have of course, the Last Supper discord, and, we, we, and then we have John 6, and then we have what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians. Uh, but we don't have it. And if we went, like, and this is one of the problems with Sola Scriptura, if we were to go literalist and in terms of Eucharist, then, then it, we would have to say, well, then nowhere in the Bible does it say old people can receive the Eucharist. Or nowhere in the Bible does it say women can receive the Eucharist. So it, it doesn't say that. So what is the ultimate framework for how the church determines this or what we believe is because the church founded by Jesus Christ, which has the power to bind and unbind, says so. Jesus gave the church, his church that he founded, powers to loose, unloose, bind and bound. And the church, protected by the Holy Spirit and faith and morals, determined in its wisdom, based on sacred oral tradition, scripture, the patristic fathers, and so forth, that you don't have to receive from both species. 
So don't go to the Bible because the Bible can't exegete itself. You go to the visible hierarchical ecclesial church. And this is what the church determined. So you're not receiving less Jesus by only getting one species. You're receiving his body, blood, soul, and divinity. You're including his blood just by receiving the host. And yeah, I mean, look, there are people because of gluten intolerance or whatever, you might go to a mass and they don't receive from the host and then they come up later and they receive from the blood. They're getting the body too. You can't separate the two. You're getting all of it. You're getting all the graces that come from it. So understand that. Now, we have a, an episode that's concomitant to this where like, well, Protestants are like, well, I want to receive the, from the Eucharist. Why can't I receive? This is a form of discrimination and so forth. And so I'll definitely put a banner uh, for that episode here because that's a separate episode. But understand, we're not getting discriminated. We only need to receive from one species. If you want to receive from both, you can take the cup if you go to a typical suburban parish or you're getting both an intinction if you're going to the ordinary or Eastern Rite Church, but you're not being deprived of anything if you receive under one species. And like I said, go to the Catechism to read on this, go to the Fourth Lateran Council in the early 1200s if you want more about this, and just understand. And when it comes to like what I think is right and what the Church teaches, brothers and sisters in Christ, we're always wrong. Okay? We must submit our will and be obedient to Holy Mother Church founded by Jesus Christ. They're not wrong when it comes to faith and morals. Can be clear. When they come to faith and morals, they're not wrong. We're the wrong. So we are the ones that need to, to understand and submit. Not the other way around, because that's the liberal view, right? I'm right, the church is wrong, the church needs to change. That's a heterodox view, that's a rebellion view, and that is not what the church is about, and that's not what we should be about. Who is the master of discord and rebellion? Satan. So remember, we have to be in all humility, submit our will to the will of the church when it comes to faith and morals. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.